Hello, this is David Mackerth here from Hull. Um, I want to read from Psalm 107, verse 23 onwards. They that go down to the sea in ships, that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heaven, they go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad, because they be quiet. So he bringeth them unto their desired haven. <clears throat> oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Amen. May God bless this to us. This is just a, a short message um, which I'm filming in the marina here in Hull. And, but it talks about those that go down to the sea in ships and they mount up to the heavens and they come down to the depths again as they are at the mercy of the elements. If anyone's never been to sea before and they go to sea and their first storm can be a very frightening experience. And really our Christian life can be like that. There are times when we are mounting up to the heavens and falling down again into the depths when we aren't sure what's going on, when we're not clear what's happening, when we wonder what God's mercy, what his goodness to us will be in such a situation. God is the one who sends the storms into our lives. I know that some of you will have storms in your lives right now, mounting up to the heights and sinking down to the depths, staggering to and fro because of the difficulties and the trials and the tribulations that are coming upon you. All of these things are from the Lord. Some of them are very terrible. Now, a seasoned sailor will see many storms in his career. So if a sailor tells you that he's afraid, then that is a very severe storm. But I, when I was a youth, when I was 15 years old, was, um, I went offshore, my, my idol was yachting, sailing on boats. And when I went offshore for the first time at the age of 15, it was a short race across the Irish Sea from England to Ireland. We were heading round an island in the middle of the Irish Sea called the Isle of Man. And I said to the owner of the boat, the skipper, I said, you see that boy over there in the distance, what side of that should we go? And he said, it doesn't matter as long as we miss it. Well, we thought nothing of it. And 15 minutes later, there was an enormous crash as we slammed straight into this boy. A tremendous dong. This boy was as big as the boat we were on. And um, it was an extremely frightening experience. Now, what happened to me then, that was three years before I became a Christian. What happened to me then is I went below I got onto my bunk, got into my sleeping bag and started praying very earnestly to the Lord. Of course, I wasn't a Christian. I, I was an agnostic probably or something like that. We just didn't bother with God at all in those days. We were scientists. But I cried out to God to save us, to have mercy upon us, to help us. That's really sincere, really crying out to God. Now, the skipper then reported that he'd checked for damage and there was actually only a slight dent in the boat, which was astonishing. But it was an extremely frightening experience for me, my first time offshore in bad weather. The story is told of um, Duncan Campbell, who was the man used mightily by God in the awakening in the Outer Hebrides in 1949, along with others. But before that, he, in the First World War, he had been in the trenches. And before going into battle one day, there were two sergeants, the story is told, who came to him for advice spiritual advice so he shared the gospel with them and they appeared to believe they prayed with him they confessed the lord jesus christ and went into battle they were both spared but when they got back from battle they denied the lord jesus christ they made mockery of christianity and carried on in their former ways so it's quite clear that their crying out to god wasn't sincere martin luther when he was a young man his father wanted him to become a lawyer his father greatly wanted him to become a lawyer Luther got caught in a thunderstorm which filled him with absolute terror and he cast himself on the ground and cried out to God and said that if God would deliver him from the thunderstorm then he would become a monk. And he carried out what he said. He became a monk. That didn't make him a Christian but through the study of scriptures and the Bible and the, an understanding of his own sinful heart Luther came to know the Lord Jesus Christ and became that bulwark and that powerhouse of the Reformation. But when we're Christians we also end up in storms and we're Christians, we also find ourselves at times rising up into the heavens and sinking down into the depths. 
But we call upon the name of the Lord. We call upon God and he delivers us. The Lord has promised to deliver us. He's promised to carry us. He's promised to be with us in the greatest of storms. A Christian of some years may say, I have been through many storms. John Newton sang, through many dangers, toils and snares, I have already come. And this is true of all of us in this world. We must face these dangers. We must face these to toils. We must face these snares. But there's not a single trial. There's not a single difficulty. There's not a single trouble that we can go through which God won't be with us in, which the Lord Jesus Christ won't walk with us through. So the question is, are we casting ourselves on the Lord? There were those two occasions, weren't there, when the seas were, well, three occasions when the seas were calmed. The first with Jonah when he was thrown over the side by the sailors who um, wanted to know why there was such a terrible storm. And as soon as Jonah was thrown over the side of the ship by the sailors, there was a great calm and the men worshipped God. And then the, the rest of Jonah's story is told in his book. But there were those two occasions with the Lord Jesus uh, when he was asleep in the boat and the storm was going to ingress into the boat, over flood the boat, sink the boat. The Lord Jesus was sleeping peacefully. His disciples were panicking, just like we would in that situation. And there was the other occasion when Peter um, was walking on the water and uh, once they got into the boat, they were ashore. But, but God is the one who has power over the waves. He has power over the storms. He has power over the elements. We may go through great trials. Imagine a sailor who's at sea and he's never seen a storm like this before. The sails are blown out. The mast is gone. The rigging is destroyed. The rudder is not responding. And he feels he's beyond hope. But he cries out to God and God delivers him. Some of us are in extreme states of difficulty as Christians. And this is the world we live in. This is the veil of tears we live in. But we can call upon the Lord. We know the Lord. We're not those who've named his name falsely. We have truly believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. We truly trust him. We truly trust him in our darkest trials, in our most difficult times. Some people have been through trials that I've never experienced, deeper trials, terrible trials of affliction, intense, terrible griefs, intense sorrows, intense difficulties, prolonged trials, trials that go on for months and years, decades even. But the Lord Jesus is with us in all of these things. Let us call on the name of the Lord. Let us look to him for deliverance. Let us look to him knowing that he carries us through and let us also give thanks to the Lord and praise him. Let's also bear one another's burdens, pray for one another, help one another, look out for one another in these days. May the Lord have mercy upon us and may he help us to be those who in the storms, in the trials, in the difficulties, when we feel as though we're staggering to and fro, we have strong confidence in our God, strong confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ, that having saved us, he will never leave us or forsake us that having delivered us, we belong to him, and he takes great delight in us. And even if we can't see him, and even if we wonder what God's purposes are for our lives, he is still there for us always. Father, we pray that you'd have mercy upon us in our trials. We pray, Father, that you'd give us this grace to look up and to see you, and to see that you are with us, and to see the Lord Jesus on the throne of heaven, reigning in heaven, and to know that our anchor is cast there not in this world not in the things of this world for we have trusted you lord jesus we have trusted you to be the savior of our souls and we know whom we have believed and we are persuaded that you are able to keep that which we have committed to you against that day we thank you lord jesus that you are the savior of all those who put their trust in you we pray that you'd revive us we pray that you pour out your holy spirit upon us in us and through us lord to those who are all around us we ask that through us, whatever our trials, whatever our difficulties, and in the days to come, which appear to be very dark and very difficult, we would stand firm in this gospel of Jesus Christ, and that we would always name his precious name, no matter what. Forgive us for our great sins. Forgive us for the times we have not stood up for your name. Forgive us for the times when we have even denied your name, Lord Jesus, to our shame, uh, showing how weak and pathetic we are. But Lord, just as you forgave Peter, forgive us also. So help us and enable us, we ask and pray. Father, glorify your Son. 
in our hearts and in our lives. We worship you. We give thanks to you. We adore you, Lord Jesus. We lift up your name and we praise you and desire to praise you and give honor to you with all our hearts. Oh, Father, come to us and revive us, we ask and pray. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Well, may the Lord have mercy upon you and bless you through his Son, Jesus Christ.